When we're talking about today overcoming fear, praise a lot, has a lot to do with it. And we praise by faith. What I mean by that is we start magnifying or glorifying how big our God is. Sometimes you got to start clapping and celebrating before you see it. That's like praise. It, we we, we kind of know, know that in sports. You know, I'm a Dodger fan. And, and even if the Dodgers are losing in the seventh inning, uh, we'll start a rally. And, and all of a sudden, the, the organist is saying, da 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 and everybody's going, you know, what that is, there you go. And that's praise for the Dodgers. <laughs> And we, we're beginning to clap, and we're in, in the Angel Stadium, they have the rally monkey. He comes out, and, and he just starts, it's just funny. He just comes with his little tambourines, and he starts getting that crowd going because somehow we know that there's a time in your life that you got to start cheering before the, come on, before you start seeing the score change. Some of you right now are waiting for the score to change for you to clap. And God is saying, if you could start clapping now, come on, and you could start celebrating a victory now. This is what's going to happen. The victory. Come on. You're going to start turning around your situation through your praise. Come on. Your faith praise. Let's give God some real praise for what he's done and what you're believing for. Is there anybody believing for a victory today? That you're not just here to come to church, but you're fighting for something. Fighting for something. And that's what life is all about. And, and I, I've learned that this is a fight of faith. Um, life will do everything it can to convince you that you'll never make it. You'll never overcome. And you've messed up so bad that there's no recovery for you. Uh, life will convince you. If you're looking at your circumstances, your circumstances will give you evidence that nothing is going to be good for you. But thank God that we as believers, our evidence is not in the physical realm. Our evidence is not in the economy. Our evidence is not in government. Our evidence is not in people. Our evidence in our, is in our faith, in our God. Come on, our faith and His promises. So we could, it's okay to start praising God right now in the middle of your battle, in the middle of your struggle, in the middle of your difficulty. So why are you smiling? when you're going through what you're going through, because I believe I'm going through it. I don't believe I'm staying in it. Come on, though I walk through, come on, though I walk through some, come on, shadows of death, though I walk through, I'm not gonna stay here. This is not gonna define me. There's a victory in my future. Come on, there's a breakthrough in my future. There's a healing in my future. Come on, it's there. Why not clap right now for it if you believe it's there? Act like you already got it, because you do. Faith is believing that you got it. I don't have a job. Did you pray about it? Yeah, I did. Did you receive a job when you prayed? Yes. Well, go ahead and celebrate your job then. Come on, celebrate your breakthrough. Celebrate your healing. Come on, celebrate your, come on, celebrate reconciliation. Celebrate a breakthrough. Celebrate your son and daughter getting saved and delivered and set free. Come on, celebrate your growth. Celebrate your business. Celebrate your graduation. You have to understand, God created all this stuff. You got to believe it. You got to pray for it. And you got to receive it now. And then you'll see it materialize. You don't, come on, real faith is not, is not getting excited because you see the rain coming. Real faith is knowing this, that God says the rain's coming, the breakthrough's coming, and because he says it, you can start celebrating right now. Come on, the check's in the mail. It's okay to celebrate. It's going to work out. We're going to be talking about overcoming fear. We're going to talk about what it is and how to overcome it. And, and I'll, I'll tell you this, when fear is in control of your life, depression is there because, because a depression is a cousin of fear. Fear also comes with another cousin called anxiety. It comes with another cousin named suicide and hopelessness. It'll get you so caught up in your mess and the wrong image in your mind, 
It'll take over your aspirations. It'll take over your dreams. It'll stop you from being even a visionary. Some of you are, are, are created to be a creator. God is giving you vision, but something happened. Something happened in your life that you've lost your vision. You've lost your drive. You've lost your motivation. And fear is in control of your life. You're not defined by your vision anymore. You're not defined by what you're believing for. You're defined by what you're scared of. It's controlling your actions. It's controlling your emotions. It's controlling your family. It's controlling your decisions. And tonight we're going to get set free from the, come on, we're going to get set free from the spirit and mindset of fear. How many are ready to get set free? Paul said one service changed his life. Come on, are you ready for this service to change your trajectory of your life? I'm excited about my future. Don't get jealous. I'm excited about my future. You don't have to get jealous. You can get excited about your future because we serve the same God. God has a plan for you too. Come on, let's receive the plan of God and stop focusing on the plan of the devil. Nobody can stop what God has called for you to do. Come on, nobody can stop your victory but you. The devil's not your worst enemy. You are. It's your thinking. We're going to end this tonight in the name of Jesus for somebody. Come on, I'm here to get a victory for somebody. And we're going to overcome this demon. Come on, this giant of fear. Jesus, have your way tonight. Holy Spirit, rain down on us. Give us your revelation. And with the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. Father, we thank you, Lord, that tonight's going to be a night of freedom. Father, those that are dealing with the spirit of anxiety and fear and panic, panic attacks. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind the spirit of fear. We bind the spirit of panic attacks. We bind, Father God, every spirit that's trying to torment your people that don't let them sleep at night. We bind you in the name of Jesus and we command you to leave this arena right now in the name of Jesus. God's people are loose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise and worship you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a seat. Overcoming fear. I want to I wanna give an overview real quick about overcoming anything. We can overcome all things. There's a great statement. Through God's love and help, including fear. You can overcome all fears, all things. Through God's love and help. I didn't just say help. It's his love and help. That means that God loves you. He cares about you. And he's concerned about every detail of your life. And he wants you to get a victory more than you want to get a victory. God wants to help you overcome whatever you're facing. What you're facing is not supposed to defeat you, overcome you. You're supposed to overcome it through God's help. God's love and help. In Romans 8, 37, there's a promise and it says, nevertheless, someone say, nevertheless. That means I'm going through something. I got a bad report from the doctor. I've been in a struggle. I got some obstacles. I got some challenges. I'm going through a trial of my life. I just went through a, a major breakdown. I went through a failure. I messed up. And this is what God is saying. Nevertheless, it, what is God saying? That's okay, but. Somebody needs to, need to swipe the devil out of your eye. Swipe. Like you do on your phone. Boop, next. This scripture is saying, I know that happened, but next. Stop getting caught up in your last failure, in your last chapter, because God is saying, nevertheless. Nevertheless, in all these things, someone say all. The word all is a Greek word, pas, and it means each and everything, all types of things, whatever, whosoever, the whole thing, always, daily, thoroughly. What God is saying, always, daily, thoroughly, all the time, whatever it is, this is what I'm guaranteeing you. You will overcome that. And this is how. All these things we overcome. Same with all these things we what? Strongly. What God is saying, any victory I give you is not going to be 
a barely made a victory. It's going to be a thorough victory. It's going to be a unanimous victory. It's going to be a decisive victory. It's going to be more than an overcoming victory. People are going to look at you and say, you just didn't win. You're totally overcoming. You know why it's important for you to get this? Because our vision sometimes is survival instead of annihilation. God does not put you in a ring of life and a challenge of, of life for you to struggle for the rest of your life. You're not here to give glory to the devil. You're here to give glory to God. You know why I say glory to the devil? Because I'm tired of Christians talking about what the devil's doing. I could care less what the devil's doing because I don't serve him anymore. I'm, I'm giving glory for what God is doing and he's given me unanimous, strong victory. You got to have this kind of faith to get it. We got to change our poverty mindset, our lack mindset, our barely making a life mindset. Well, it's good enough. God says good enough. That's not how I think. Are you settling for good enough when I want to give you best? Our, our, our shift, we have to start shifting our thinking to start receiving bigger. We got to get our thoughts lined up with God so we can start receiving the victories that God has for us. Nevertheless, through the, nevertheless, all these things, nevertheless, in all these things, we overcome strongly through the help of him who loved us. You know what he's saying? I already loved you. It's done. Say it with me. God loves me. And because he loves me, because he loves me, say it with me, because he loves me, he helps me with every challenge, with all things, with every battle, whatever I'm facing, I overcome through the help of the one who loves me. That word overcome is a Greek word, hyper nikao. Now, hyper nikao sounds cool because I just said it. Like, Pastor, man, you know some Greek, do you? I, I don't know. I don't even know, if, I don't even know if I pronounced it right. But I did it with confidence. But the word hyper means to overcome above and beyond to an extreme degree. To, to be more than a conqueror, to get a decisive victory. The word Nikao is where we get the word Nike. Nike. The word Nike means the God of victory. I know that they had a false God of victory they did call Nike, but we know the true God of victory. And I'm going to introduce you to the God that loves you. Come on, the God that's for you. You serve the God of victory. Since he's the God of victory, this is what he can't do, lose. He's not the God of losing. He's not the God of defeat. He, come on, he's not the, come on, he's not the God of abuse. He's not the God of rejection, but he's the God of decisive victory. Does anybody serve the God of victory? You got to know who you're serving. Because you have to know who you're going in the battle with. What God is saying, I'm the God of victory. And whatever battle you're in, will you acknowledge I'm there with you? Because if you can acknowledge I'm there with you, you'll never lose again. Are you serious? Never lose again? Never lose again. I'm not expecting to ever lose again. When I served the devil, I was losing all the time. I'm dumb serving the loser, the God of losing, which is Satan. Come on, it's self-will. And I'm serving now. I made up my mind. I repented of losing. And now I've chosen the God of victory. I'm serving him. So I expect victory over every single challenge. What have you been stressed out about that you should be celebrating a victory in? But pastor, it doesn't look good. It's a fight of faith. It's not a fight of feelings and emotions. I don't feel it. Come on, is there anybody going to mature past their feelings, emotions, and stop looking at trying to get your evidence from people that are all jacked up? 
I don't see change. Who are you looking at? What are you looking at? What do you focus on? Now, fear has some negative effects. I'm just going to go through them real quick. And then we're going to talk about what fear is and then what faith is. Negative effects of fear. Mental. Now, I don't know if you want some of this, but if you, want, if you, if you don't overcome fear, this will, this will define your life. These effects. These will be the symptoms of a life control, a mind controlled by fear. Mental and emotional, sp mental, emotional, and spiritual distress, such as anxiety, worry, depression, mental illness, and demonic torment. Two, avoidance behavior. When we are afraid of something, we may avoid it altogether, which can limit our experiences and opportunities. This can lead to feelings of regret and missed opportunities. Some of us right now, because of fear, you, you're, you're avoiding what you should be moving into. Number three, physical health problems, such as increased risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, weakened immune system. Number four, social isolation. Fear can lead, can, can lead us to, to, lead to social isolation. We, as we may avoid social situations and interactions due to fear of rejection, judgment, and criticism. There's some people right now that you're not in the church, and the reason you're not in the church, you're scared to be rejected. You're not involved in ministry because you're scared to fail. Number five, prevents us from making decisions. Fear, fear can lead to paralysis. We can, may be afraid of making the wrong choice, so we avoid making any decisions at all. Some of us are right now under a spirit of confusion. You don't even know what to do with your life, and you're scared of making a decision, so you don't make any decisions. It prevents us from making decisions. Six, causes us to compare ourselves with others, which will make us feel inadequate or inferior. Stop comparing yourself with another person. God did not, come on, God did not make you to compare yourself with another person. You are a unique individual with a specific plan created by God. And stop comparing yourself to others and letting the devil make you feel that you're not as good as. You don't have to be as good as them. You just have to be the person that God created you to be. Number seven, causes us to be self-centered. Fear, fear can cause us to focus on ourselves and our problems rather than God and others. Number eight, causes us to doubt God's goodness and love for us. Number nine, difficulty concentrating. Fear can make it difficult to concentrate and focus on tasks as our minds are preoccupied, preoccupied with worrying thoughts and scenarios. This can impact our ability to perform well at work or school and can lead to feelings of frustration and inadequacy. So you have to be careful of the spirit of fear because you can't be fearing and having great vision at the same time. Because you're using all of your vision capacity to imagine worst case scenarios. Some of, you guys, some of us have used our, 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 our gift of vision and we've, we've lent it to the devil and you no longer can see a great future because all your energy is imagined in worst case scenarios. We call that catastrophizing. catastrophizing. You know what that means? Worst case scenarios. You're always thinking, what, what, what? worst case scenario? How about best case scenario? It causes us to develop negative thought patterns, sleep disturbances, and decreased motivation. Fear can decrease our motivation to pursue our goals and dreams as we are, may be afraid of failure or rejection. This can lead to feelings of apathy, resignation, which can impact our overall well-being and sense of purpose. So these 12 things are just tapping the surface of what fear will do, but none of them are good. So we need to get rid of the spirit and we need to get rid of this mindset. So now let's dive into what fear is and what faith is. Fear is the anticipation and expectation of something bad is going to happen. What is fear? I'm, I'm expecting something bad to happen. Many of us were trained to expect the worst. A matter of fact, our mother used to tell us when things were good, get scared. Because if they're really good, bad is right around the corner. 
Instead of thinking another victory is around the corner. Instead of thinking, come on, another breakthrough is around the corner. Instead of thinking, come on, another, come on, prosperity is around the corner. A breakthrough is around the corner. Fear is expecting something bad is in my future. How can you have a great life if you're caught up with a thought where you're constantly expecting something bad? If you're expecting something bad, I'll, I'll tell you this, nothing good's coming your way. And even if it did, you wouldn't see it. Mark 4.35. Now, you know what's so crazy? Not only will you not see it, even if the opportunity knocked on your door and yelling, I'm here, you would reject it because you don't even think you're worthy of it. Too good to be true. Not me. Things never work out for me. They always, I always end up, none of my relationships work. Just when I think it's going to happen, lo and behold, it's like a rug was pulled right underneath me. You got all kind of poetic talk. <laughs> Instead of feeding your faith, you're poetically feeding your fears. Right now, I'm coming against a spirit of negative expectation right now. We're going to break that because until you break that, you can't be in agreement with what God wants to do in your life. Matthew 4, 35, look at this example. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. That's good. So we're going from one side to the next. Say it with me. We're going from one side to the next. We're going to get to the other side of this sickness. We're going to get to the other side of this difficulty. We're going to get to the other side of this challenge. Come on. We're going to get to the other side. And on the other side, there's massive victory over there. Come on. We're going to destroy some devils on the other side. If God says we're crossing over, believe him. Stop quitting in the middle of your transition. In your transition, there are demons that are there to convince you and make you quit and stop believing in the future that God promised you. Every word of God will be tested. Do you have the faith to hold on to a vision? Do you have the faith to hold on to a dream? Even though there's obstacles, even though there's resistance. Let's take a look at this. But soon, so we're going to the other side, but soon, here's the test. A fierce storm came up. Some of you guys are in a fierce storm. High waves were breaking into the boat. And it began to fill with water. Truth, it's happening. You had a real problem. But I got some good news for you. You got a real God in the boat with you. Come on, Jesus is bigger than your problems. Be Jesus is bigger than your failures. Jesus is bigger than your fears. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Trip? Like what? This is what this is scripture is saying. It is possible to have peace in the middle of a storm. The storm is not greater than the one that loves you. You don't have to consistently be addicted to your fears and your anxiety. You got to break that addiction. Some of you guys aren't addicted to a drug. You're addicted to a wrong mindset. Are you still with me? Come on. We're fighting. We're fighting. So it is possible to have peace in a storm. I remember my daughter, Brianna, she was just up here when she had cancer. People would look at me and say, Pastor Marco, my, or, or my coworkers, why do you have so much peace? I have my peace because my faith is not in the last report I got from the doctor. My faith is not in how my daughter looks right now. My faith isn't in what her hair was all falling out and, and she couldn't walk and, and the, the reports kept coming one wave after another wave, but yet I still had peace in the middle of my storm because I, my faith was not in my circumstance or the doctor's report. Whose report are you going to believe? My faith was in the promises of God. By his stripes, she was healed. I'm going to tell you uh, the kind of the faith that 
I, that I walk in, I'm not bragging about my faith. I'm just telling the faith I walk in. I'm not trying to be cocky. I'm, this is the this kind of faith I walk in. To tell you the truth, my faith isn't in, in results. My faith is in a God. Because this is what I already know. He has, he's in charge of the results. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you, this is crazy. It didn't matter if my daughter died or she didn't die. It was not going to shake my faith in a God. He still heals. He still delivers. And he still gives eternal life. Stop putting your faith in the result and put your faith in a God and trust in him. He's going to work it out. Jesus was sleeping. The disciples woke him up. Same storm, different approach. Shouting, teacher, don't you care? Don't you love us? Some of us are, are, are thinking that way right now. And I'm telling you, as long as you think like that, you're defeated. God, don't you care? Can't you see what I'm going through? Why me? Not me, it should be them. You're defeated with, by the devil because you're agreeing with the devil. The only difference between you and anybody else that's out there, you're going to go through problems, you're going to go through storms, you're going to go through difficulties, but there's one big difference. The one that's in the boat with you, come on, the one that's walking with you, he has power, come on, he has power over everything you're facing, so your victory is not in your boat, your victory is in the one that's in your boat. Lord Jesus, help us. We're going to drown. Fear. They had, a, they had an expectation of drowning. They forgot that Jesus said, we're going to the other side. You'll never overcome any situation if you're forgetting the promises of God. That's why we study the word. That's why we expose ourselves to the word. That's why we come in a room like this and the Holy Spirit begins to, come on, rally us and build our faith. But God is saying, don't forget my promises. We're going to drown. No one says, we're going to the other side, Jesus. Just keep sleeping. I already know you said we're going to the other side. We're good. We believe in what you said. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Jesus uses faith words and took authority over the storm. Suddenly, suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Our words in the middle of our struggle reveal our hearts. If our hearts and minds are controlled by fear, our words will be full of fear. Speak fear. Speak fear and feed your fear. There has to be a time in your life that you stop speaking drowning. You start speaking defeat. You stop talking about people. You stop go, talking about your past and being a victim and everything that happened to you and your struggles. I'm not saying deny or ignore that you're going through something, but you can't stay stuck there. You'll never overcome your fears until you start controlling your mouth. You'll never get a victory if you don't have the faith to speak it. As long as they were speaking drowning, they were moving towards drowning. Thank God that Jesus was in that boat. Because if it wasn't for the faith of Jesus, they would have drowned. Their response to the storm was going to determine the results of that storm. I know things are hard, and I know they've been difficult, and I know you might be going through the storm of your life, but you better watch what you're saying. It's time for you to speak your victory, speak your solution. Come on, speak your, come on, speak about overcoming instead of about speaking about your problem and people. Some of us are moving towards victory because you're still talking too small. But my mom and my husband and the boss at work and my addiction and my depression, and my anxiety, and my bipolarism. I mean, you got it all down. You, you're confessing 
the demonic salad that the devil's giving you. But as long as you're confessing the demonic salad that the devil's giving you, you're just repeating the devil's words and all you're going to do is attract the devil's results. But somebody has to stop the mess and say, I'm no longer speaking my problem. I'm no longer talking about drowning. I'm talking about victory. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of poverty, the spirit of addiction, the spirit of depression, the spirit of fear. Get out of here in Jesus' name. Because if you don't have the faith to speak it, you'll never have it. We're growing as a church. We're making disciples. Tomorrow I'm going to be in L.A. And we're going to start casting out some demons and tearing down some strongholds. Come on. I don't fear the demons of gang banging in L.A. Because the one that's in me has already defeated the main gang banger, Satan. You got to get this in your spirit. I know this is just intro. Man, Lord, help us. So Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, what did he start doing? Rebuking. You know, I want you to get this. You as a believer have authority, so stop being a victim. God made you, come on, if you're a believer, if you're not a believer, you have no power. Your words, your words have no power. It's only when you receive Jesus do you have power to move mountains, power to move devils. Come on, power to change circumstances. Your faith is greater than facts. What's a fact? I could care less what's a fact. When I speak, when, come on, when we start speaking in agreement with God's word, what I speak turns into a fact. So Jesus began to rebuke the wind and the, what, what did it say, rebuke the what? Wind. Yeah, the wind. <laughs> and the waves. No, and he said to the waves, silence, be still. Depression, silence, be quiet. I rebuke you. I command you to go. You will no longer control my mind, my emotions, my future, my dreams. I command anxiety. I will not accept that anymore. It's not my diagnosis. My diagnosis says I am free. My diagnosis says I'm a heal. I'm healed. My diagnosis says I have a sound mind. Where'd you get your diagnosis from? The word. Be crazy for Jesus. Some of you guys were crazy for the devil with all those drugs you took. You were talking to people who weren't there. Hey, Sam, what do you think? Sam ain't there, bro. And I'm not dogging you if you've been hearing voices. All I'm saying, that's the devil. And you got to start rebuking those voices. Because if you, don't, if you keep talking to them and having conversations with them, they'll stay. But there's somebody here that's going to get set free from their anxiety and their fear tonight. <laughs> faith is. This is all we're going to be able to cover today. What well, fear is, faith is. Last two. We're going to cover two. One. Faith is anticipation and expectation that something good is going to happen. Faith is anticipation of some bad going to Fear is an anticipation or it's ex expectation that something's bad. Understand, if you're expecting bad, you're under a demonic spirit. Jesus did not die, resurrect from the dead. This is what he said, my plans for you are for good and not evil. Hope in the future. God says, do you believe my plans or do you believe the devil's plans? You got to start breaking that demonic life, I mean, that demonic mindset. Because that demonic mindset will send you right, right back to the drugs. That demonic mindset will just send you right back into the pain. That demonic mindset will send you right back into the bondage. It'll, it'll take you back because it's going to convince you, you might as well give up. There's nothing in your future. That demonic mindset will just talk you out of everything. Just because you had a jacked up relationship in your last five relationships doesn't mean your next relationship needs to be jacked up. 
And you know what's so crazy? A good guy comes and you're thinking he's just like all of them. And God said, no, he's not. I just sent him to you, but you can't see a blessing because you're so jacked up thinking about your past. You can't receive the blessing I'm giving you. You're messing this one up. All right, let's go. <laughs> Hebrews 11.1. 1. So faith is expecting, something's expecting that some good's going to happen. Say it with me. Something's good ready to happen. Something's good ready to happen. Every year we're expecting good things to happen. I'm not saying I won't go through some battles. I won't go through some difficulties. But I know when I'm in a fight, there's going to be a victory at the end. It's just a sign that God is releasing something if I'm in a fight or I'm in a struggle. But I do know this. This church is going to grow. We're going to come on. We're going to expand campuses. We're going to see people get saved. This is what's the beginning. We got to believe something good's about to happen. Now, if you are not a believer, you're stuck. You're just hoping something good happens, but, you, but I'm not sure. You get distracted. I know something's good ready to happen. And something better than I've ever experienced is ready to happen. I'm not going backwards. I'm going from glory to another level of glory to another level. Come on. Another level, another level, another level. God is ready to release. Come on. Another levels of influence. Other levels of leadership. Give God some praise if you're a believer for another level. I'm scared though. I'm scared. I'm scared to say that because... What if something bad happens? Here you go. The devil has you. Come on, you got to be careful that the devil doesn't have you on, just on, on auto-tune here. Press a button. There it goes. Repeat my words. Okay, let's see. Look at this. Hebrews 11.1. 1. What is faith? It is the confident assurance. This is how you defeat fear. Fear, faith over fear. You just don't resist fear. You replace it with faith. Faith in God's word. Faith is in his promises. Understand this. You don't have a depression problem. You have a faith problem. And you have a faith problem because you have a word problem. You don't know the word. And because you don't know the word, the devil comes against you. And you're like, I'm confused. Why? ¿Qué pasó? <laughs> and this is a problem. You're waiting for Sunday for someone to pray with you, but you've been in a battle all week long. You better learn how to fight for, come on. You better learn how to fight a fight of faith. You can't wait for Sunday. Sunday might not come. You're going to have to have faith in the Word. That's why I read the Word every day. I'm building my faith. And when I see David kill Goliath, I go, that's me. And that's Jesus in me. He defeats Goliath. And he's in me. The one that defeats Goliath is in me. We got this. When I'm going through, come on, when I'm going through a situation, when I look like it doesn't have enough, then I look at the scripture where he takes five loaves and two fish. It doesn't look like I have enough, but I serve a God that's able to multiply what I got. I'm expecting multiplication in my future. Where do I get that faith from? The word. What is faith? It is a confident assurance that something we want I'm telling you, there's a spirit of religion that makes you think that God doesn't want you to have what you want. God says, I want you to get this. God will give you the desires of your heart. When you surrender your life to God, your desires are matched up with his. And, and you're scared to ask for, come on, you're scared to ask for your wants. But God doesn't want to give my, my wants. I just, I just want to stay right here. I just, it's good enough where I'm at. I know my, shoe, my shoes have holes in them, but praise God for the holy shoes. <laughs> and, and, he said, and he said, the devil's children out there are getting brand new shoes, and you're, thank, come on, and you're okay with your, shoe, your shoes that got holes? I'm not saying don't thank God for the shoe, the holy shoes. 
but don't get stuck with your holy shoes and make it a religion. God is saying, come on, there's shoes coming and they're better than what you got. I might have some shoes, holes in my shoes, but don't look at this. My new shoes are on their way. All right, look. It is confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It's assurance that something we want is going to what? Something we want is going to what? How can you be depressed if you're confident of what you want on this way? Now, I'm telling you, how you build this kind of faith is hanging around people that have faith. Hang out so people that are accomplishing some stuff. Hang out with some people that are living for God. Hang out with some people that don't compromise. Come on, hang out with some people full of faith. Come on, hang out with some people that are growing. And when you start hanging around with them, your faith will grow. Some of you guys are comfortable hanging around people that are failing because it makes you feel like a hero. And the devil right now is expanding. I mean, this one, the devil is trying to expand your poverty. And God says, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm going to put you around some people full of faith. It's going to stretch your faith. It's going to make you feel uncomfortable. But I'm taking you places so you can start believing for more. Give God some praise. Come on, there's more on the way. Okay. One more thing about fear. Fear is a demonic spirit. It's not just a mindset, it's a demon. In 2 Timothy 1.7 it says, For God has not given us a spirit of what? That word spirit, pneuma, means demon, evil spirit, mental disposition. What it means is, is, is when we're walking in fear, we have a demonic mental disposition. Our, our thinking is in alignment. Now I'm going to tell you this. When you're thinking and it's in alignment with the devil... This is the second thing that's going to happen. Um, your mindset is going to be a negative and a demonic magnet. Fear is a magnet of hell. Just like praise and worship and faith is a magnet of heaven. God says he inhabits the praises of his people. When we begin to praise and worship God, it attracts the presence and power of God. And that's why you got to be careful that you love the word so much, but you don't like to praise God. You're waiting for the word. Come on, the music to end so we can get to the word, the good part. And God is saying, come on, sometimes the good part is the praise and worship. Because if you could praise me, it will attract my presence. It will attract my power. It will attract my provision. It will, come on, it will attract everything from heaven on earth. Does anybody want a heaven invasion in your life? Start praising it. Magnet. What we fear the most, we attract into our lives. It's almost like fear is a beacon light that goes off and signals hell and it says there's a person that you have legal access to to bring their worst fears into reality faith is a beacon to heaven someone's believing god is looking on earth can i find anybody with faith i'm ready to do something well i find faith on the earth and god is saying when someone has faith on earth it attracts the power it attracts heaven into that life Someone say two realms. In Job 3.25 it says, For the thing I fear comes upon me. And what I dread befalls me. That's what's so crazy about fear. It has the power to attract what you're fearing. If you don't watch it, you become a demonic prophet over yourself. I told you. Didn't I tell you? I had a feeling. Remember I told you the other day, and that's why you, can't, you cannot be going to mediums and stuff. Read my card, read, read my tarot card. You're opening yourself to, for a demonic plan in your life. I get when you, when, when you open up yourself to horoscopes, and, and some of you guys believe in the fortune cookie too much. You're ready to meet someone. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Confirmation. Would you?
she gave confirmation. Chinese restaurant. Imagine having more faith in a fortune cookie than scripture. Because I'm, I'm just telling you, when you start going to those demonic places, you're going to get demonic fortunes over you. And when you believe them and you hook up, you're hooking up with hell itself. Nothing good's going to come out of it. Just killing, stealing, and destroying, and you're going to be full of demons. For the thing I fear comes upon me. But faith is a positive magnet. We'll end it with this. How many want to be a positive magnet? In Matthew 9, 28, it says, when he went into the house, when Jesus went into the house, the blind men came up to him. And Jesus said to him, do you believe? Do you have faith with a deep abiding trust that I'm able to do this? Do you have faith? Come on, do you have a vision that I'm able to heal you? I know you don't got physical vision. I'm not asking you that. I already know you're blind, but I'm asking, do you have spiritual vision? Come on, are you seeing something happening in this moment? Are you thinking, come on, do you believe I can get you out of this? Come on, do you believe I'm bigger than your court case? Come on, do you believe I'm better? Come on, bigger than your bad report? Do you believe I'm bigger than your poverty? Do you believe I'm bigger than your abuse? Do you believe? Well, they said to him, yes, Lord, we, we believe. That's why we're here. Why come to this place and choose not to believe? Like, that's dumb. You know what that means is? To be in a category of a non-believer, this is the category you're in. Nothing's going to change. Because before anything changes, your belief has to change. And that's science. <laughs> then he touched their eyes see what God is saying I won't touch anything you don't have faith for I'm keeping hands off of situations of your life because you're depressed about it instead of come on instead of believing for something all I all you're doing is complaining to me and complaining don't move my hand faith does then he touched their eyes saying according to to your faith, your trust, and your confidence in my power, in my ability to heal it, to heal it will be done for you. According to your belief, it'll be done for you. I need to get my faith bigger because I got to believe for bigger things. Come on. Is anybody right now saying, I expand my thinking. My thinking is too small. I'm just thinking, I might barely make it. I'm looking at my circumstance and it's depressing me. Every time I look at him, every time I look at her, every time I look at my bank account, every time I read the doctor's report, every time I look at my situation, it doesn't look like it's getting any better. And God has said, stop looking at that. And start declaring your victory. Start declaring your breakthrough. Start declaring what you desire, not what's wrong. Come on, give God some praise. We're done. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. We're going to overcome this fear. Now, stand up. Now we're just going to get to work in the next few minutes. And God don't need a lot of time. All he says, according to faith, he touched their eyes, healed, and they were instantly healed. But I don't know how long he was, sometimes I don't know how long he was teaching before their faith was built to receive. So we see a pattern in scripture that Jesus would teach. And after he taught, then miracles would happen. Because the atmosphere was, was set because faith was now in the room. Some of you right now, you're never going to overcome your fear until you get on a heavy Word diet. Heavy word diet. You're on a heavy YouTube diet, Instagram diet, TikTok diet, tick, 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 tock. And then you're wondering why you can't get a breakthrough. Heavy Netflix, I'm binging, I'm binging. You're so proud of your network, Netflix binge, I'm binging. What'd you do all weekend? I binged. <laughs> On what? Netflix. Oh my gosh, it was awesome. Underneath the covers, it was so cozy. 
but your life is defeated and you have no faith and you're not going anywhere. You know, come on, you know the game. Come on, you know what's happening. I, I, went, I went to dinner the other night and I heard a couple and all they were doing was talking. I thought they were talking about life and I found out for an hour they were talking about a show. And I didn't even get involved in that because I don't know nothing about their shows. I know about the words. I, I, I was going to tap me in and we'll talk about some real stuff. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, we could tap in. And get... Okay. Okay, this is what we're going to do. If, you're, if you, if you want to get rid of your fear and anxiety tonight, just come forward real quick. You want to exchange your fear for faith. I'm talking, there's something going to happen here. There's been worry. You've been worrying about everything. You've been super anxious. And I'm telling you, you're here for the first time. I'm telling you right now that Jesus is here to change your thinking, change your life, change your future. Come on, he's going to transform you. We're going to break the spirit. We're going to come against the spirit. And we're going to rebuke this spirit, this demon. We're going to break it. We're going to break it because I'm telling you this, as long as you're fearing, you're a magnet for the devil. Some of you guys have a beacon. Come to me. Bring my fears to reality. How could you overcome like that? You can't. As a man thinketh, so is he. According to your faith, let it be. Faith in Jesus. You know why some of you guys right now are fearful? Because your faith is in you and your ability, and your talent, and you, you even have a philosophy, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And that's a demonic mindset. If it's going to be, it's going to be your faith in Jesus. You don't have enough to accomplish the dreams and visions God has for you. God's giving you a vision that's bigger than you. So stop trying to talk yourself out of something God's ready to do in your life, but God's just saying, I just need you to say yes to it and proclaim it, and I'm going to do it with you. Right? Faith in people, they let you down. This is what I guarantee you. You put your faith in people, I guarantee you this, they're going to let you down. Well, everybody lets me down. That's what they're supposed to do. Only God is the only one that's going to let you down. Some of you guys, older people, you're too political. Your faith is, in, your faith is is too much in a political party instead of your Lord and Savior. There's a government above all these governments. It's the kingdom of heaven, and that's what you belong to. Come on, give God some praise, because my hope is in that kingdom. I, it's okay to vote, all that stuff, but don't expect for anyone to be your Savior but Jesus. Amen, come on. I mean, this last political thing that we went through, there was families that no longer talked to each other. Who'd you vote for? I voted for Trump. Oh my gosh, you're from the devil. <laughs> Who'd you vote for? Biden. Can't you, don't you know that he has a demonic agenda? All I'm saying is stop fighting. Your answer is in Jesus. Vote and believe. Come on, and vote according to your faith. But understand, your answer is in Jesus. Okay, we got to change our thinking, I'm telling you. And I, right now you're committing to let go of your fears and start walking a walk of faith. Not faith in faith, faith in Jesus. Say, say it with me, faith in Jesus. I seen a fighter the other day. He's a fighter, a UFC fighter. And after the interview, they interviewed him and they said, Man, you seem like you had a different energy, man. Like, you were so positive. What happened? He goes, I'll tell you what happened. Jesus. He goes, I was not just working on my fighting technique. I was working on my thinking. I started thinking like God. I started realizing I'm a child of God. And I started having, come on, my mind started, I started believing for greater things in my life. Okay. Now, this is going to be a fight for the rest of your life, a fight of faith, a fight of thinking. It's going to be a fight for the what? Because the enemy wants to conquer your thinking because if he conquers your thinking, he conquers your future. 
So that's why I got to get daily bread, daily study of the word, daily breakthroughs. I read the Bible every day. I come to church every chance the doors are open. I come every Wednesday. I come every Sunday. I come Sunday and I, I just, I was here Tuesday, last night. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be in LA tomorrow. I'm in church. I'm preaching. Come on. I'm in the presence of God. I'm hearing the word of God. I was working out today, and while I was working out, I'm listening to the Word for, come on, for an hour, just listening to the Word. I'm exposing myself to next level thinking. What you put in is what's going to come out. I'm telling you, stop being lazy. You want massive breakthrough with minimum effort. This is not a microwave life. Put in the work. God will do the miracle. I'm proud of you. You put in the work. You're here tonight. Come on. You're here tonight. You came, overcame obstacles. You're here tonight. Sunday morning. But I'm getting a little sleepy. Tell your sleep to shut up and we're going to church. All of a sudden your friends, hey bro, I got some tickets. And you say, I don't care what tickets you got. I'm going to church. I got a ticket there after church. If those tickets are still good, we'll maybe do something. Come on. I got to renew my thinking. I got to renew my thinking. All right? Come on. You don't have a temptation problem. You got a thinking problem. Start thinking bigger. Start thinking holy. Start thinking sold out. I'm going to resist. We're going to resist the spirit of anxiety right now and fear. But first, we're going to receive the king of peace which is Jesus. Come on. Are you ready to follow Jesus? Because he's a source. Come on. He's a source. Someone say he's a source. The Bible says the peace that I give you, the world cannot give you. And it's not a fragile peace, solid peace. Repeat after, let's bow our heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Come on. We're going to receive it. We're in a storm and we're going to speak victory. We're going to call on Jesus. Come on. He's going to calm the storm. He's going to get us to the other side. Anyone that calls on Jesus, it's going to receive a breakthrough tonight. It's going to receive freedom tonight. God, Jesus has been waiting. Call on me. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for choosing me and calling me to follow you. Forgive me for doing it my way. I repent for all my sins and negative thinking and complaining set me free forgive me cleanse me and fill me with your Holy Spirit from this day forward I confess you as my Lord and Savior if you're for me no one or nothing can defeat me Right now, I renounce, I rebuke the spirit of fear, anxiety. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of depression. I command you now, get out of my life. Spirit of addiction, I break your power through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, save me, deliver me, and fill me. I'm saved. I'm free in the name of Jesus. Satan, fear, anxiety, you're underneath my feet. You're no longer in my head. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for victory, freedom, peace joy i receive it now i am a follower of jesus christ i dedicate myself to studying your word for the rest of my life in jesus name amen come on give god some praise come on church let's give god some victory in this place i need now everybody that's here if you need prayer, we want to pray with you. We just pray, but we want to pray with you. Some of you right now need someone to lay hands on you and rebuke something out of you. And just stay right here if you need that kind of breakthrough. But also, your next step, 
Say it with me. Next step is Holy Warriors. And that's on Sunday at 9 o'clock. So be here Sunday at 9 o'clock and get ready to be transformed for the next 40 days. For those that were at Holy Warriors last night, we're on a fast and you're drinking water, but I want to make sure you know you can eat. You're just drinking water with your meals, not just all water, so you know that. Okay, so some of you guys are starving right now. You could eat, just drink water, no sodas and stuff. All right, but if you need prayer, I need some leaders up here. We have, come on, we have like four or five hundred people up here that need a breakthrough. Come on, tonight's their night. They might need just a, a come on, a faith contact. You be that faith contact with them. Come on, I need some leaders back this way. Come on, you want to go that way to Denny's? And God says, no, right here. My nourishment comes from doing my Father's will. Come up here, get ready.